YouTube, what the crap's going on? Heir of Carthage back, and we're not going to review Pontus again. This is another Heirs faction focused, and today we're going to review Egypt. Many of you have asked me about Egypt, like, why'd you skip Egypt? Why'd you skip Egypt? I never skipped them. They're just not in alphabetical order on the list, because I believe the game files call them the Ptolemaic Empire, so it finds them a little lower down the list. But here we are. Um, so, Egypt, an interesting faction, probably one of the most diverse factions in the game, as far as different unit types and abilities. Uh, not, and, and I think Egypt is generally considered one of the power factions in the game, probably due to that. They have access to elephants, chariots, sword infantry, pike infantry, spear infantry, massive amounts of slingers. Uh, the one place where Egypt is weak, and I mean it's the one place, is uh, melee cav. Uh, citizen cav is their best, um, but that's the only place really where Egypt has a weakness. So, in any case, let's take a look. They have access to a wide variety of generals. I actually like using the Carrion Axeman General most of the time because it's just a cheap way to put your general into the army and he can stay behind your infantry line and support your infantry line easier maybe than if he was in a cav unit. Um, some people like to put it in an elephant or um, like a shield bearer because they're not real... Actually, I don't think you can pick shield bearer with Egypt. You can't. You have Royal Thorax Swords. Um, let's take a look at these unit stats. Royal Thorax Swords, uh, which I don't know why you would pick because for the amount of money you're paying, these guys are not really all that good in melee. Uh, they would be against, like, spear units or something, but look at this Royal Peltist. It would chop the crap out of that Royal Thorax Sword. Uh, Hellenic Royal Guard's a crazy strong pike unit. Very strong. But the matter is, is can you get them into the appropriate situation to do some beasting? And then, of course, you can pick Ptolemaic Cav or African War Elephants. Again, I like the Carrion Axeman just because it's a cheap way to get a general. The upgrades on these guys are dirt cheap. You can throw a few upgrades on them. If you have money left over, it's just a great way to go. Um... As far as melee infantry, they have access to a ton of different units. Let me walk through them. Egyptian infantry are kind of like Eastern spearmen. They're good for nothing except for uh, meat shields and charge bait. That's uh, too bad, but that's what these peasants live to do, is they live to die. Uh, carrion axemen aren't a whole lot better. They're maybe similar to hillmen, except they're a little more expensive, and they're probably a little better than hillmen. Uh, they also have half uh, armor piercing, half standard damage, so these guys are actually pretty formidable if you can get them into a flank. Or, once you get a cav fight started, charge them into the flanks of a cav fight. Because of that armor piercing, they'll actually do alright. Um, they can be used to chase down enemy skirmishers and other stuff because they're a light infantry. Um, these Galatian swords are actually a fun unit. For the price, it's a pretty good unit. You don't have real high melee attack, but you get solid weapon damage and charge bonus, melee defense. Um, not very good armor or health, but pretty good base morale. Uh, so this is a great unit for just being able to work the flanks or uh, kind of hold off enemy units. I, you know, it's just a, a more mobile unit than a pike unit. I really like the uh, the uh, Galatian sword unit. Sobek cultists were added in the update of the um, Beast of War DLC. These guys have pretty good stats for their price, but the problem is, is don't be fooled. They come in smaller numbers. As you can see, these uh, swordsmen would come at 160. You only get half so many Sobek cultists, and it's because they have the encourage ability. They are, again, probably I don't know if they're the cheapest unit with it, but they're close. Um, and uh, it's because they have an encourage ability that they cut the men in half, otherwise this unit would be a great value. Uh, but they're not really used to be fighting, they're really used to just kind of shore up cheap infantry or other units to try and uh, get their morale to stay higher. They're a very cool looking unit, as in the game they have crocodile skins over their heads, which is pretty awesome. Uh, you got Thorax Swordsmen, which have been improved in the most recent updates. Uh, they're still not a great sword unit, but for the price, they, they're alright. Uh, they're still a low attack sword unit, but they do have good melee defense, armor, health, and base morale. Um, so they're going to be a pretty a pretty good unit. Uh, don't expect them to beat Romans head to head, but they they can hold their own for a little while in most situations. Royal Thorax Swordsmen, we talked about these guys. They do have good melee attack for the price, maybe not so great. Good weapon damage, um, a good charge bonus, uh, good melee defense, armor, health. But again, at this price. It depends on what you're fighting. If you go up against Roman units, this is not going to be a cost-effective unit. If you go up against Barbarian units, like cheaper swords or something, it might turn out cost-effective. Uh, if you get into spears or something with it, it'll definitely be cost-effective. you just got to be careful about how you use it. Royal Peltist, on the other hand, can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with pretty much any other sword unit of the game. Um, it, they will definitely take out pretty much any Roman cohort, except for a Praetorian Guard. I believe they would even take out an Evocati cohort. Um, these are a very strong unit, they're very expensive, uh, but they have very high attack. Their melee defense is a little lower than the Thorax Swords, but they do have very high attack. 
And then you have Royal Gal or Galatian Royal Guard. These guys used to be the beast of Rome too. Uh, they're a non-formation attack sword unit, and back in the day whenever formation attack was worse, these guys were like all the rage. They're a pretty strong sword, uh, sword unit, they're kind of like Oathsworn, um, but they do have a very powerful uh, charge bonus, lots of melee defense, solid armor, health, and base morale is very high, and they have used the whip, which can drive up their attack even higher for a short period of time. A very strong sword unit, be careful about how you use them once again, but they're very sturdy. As far as spear infantry, uh, Nubian spearmen are pretty good for the price. They don't have cavalry counter tactics like barbarian spears though, but they're not bad if you can get them into a fight after it's started with cavalry. Same thing with Levy Thurio spears. Um, I think these guys have formation attack, which is why they have lower stats but cost about the same. Um, so if you want a spear unit to hold out a little longer, these guys would be alright, but in a cav fight you really don't want formation attack. Uh, Thurio Spears we've seen before in other factions, and then they have these new, uh, these were also added in the Beast of War, which is the Mercenary Leopard Warriors. This is a pretty strong spear unit, all things said and done, and it also has Frenzied Charge, which can help. Uh, it's already got a pretty high charge bonus, throw Frenzied Charge in, and it'd be pretty good. Uh, if you can get these guys into a cav fight without having been charged, uh, they're going to be pretty strong. They don't have much armor, but they do have good shield value, which means they can try and block some um, missile fire, but their armor's low, which means they're going to suffer when they're in melee because that armor helps block some of the damage from melee attacks. They do have very good morale, though. All right, uh, pike infantry, they have Egyptian pikemen, pikemen, thorax pikemen, and Hellenic royal guard. We've seen pikemen and thorax pikemen before. Egyptian pikemen are kind of like levy pikemen, except even just a little bit cheaper. These are probably some of the most cost-effective pikes in the game. They do have low morale and health. They will not stand up to skirmish fire of any sort, be it slingers, archers, or javelin men for an extended period of time, so you do have to keep them safe from that. Um, Hellenic Royal Guard is a beastly pike unit, probably the best in the game. Um, if you can get these guys into an infantry fight, they'll dominate any infantry unit in the game head-on, period. Um, but that's only head-on, so remember that you've got to be able to force someone into that fight, and... They're not exactly susceptible to javelins because they have 80 armor, but their shield value isn't real high. So for a unit this expensive, they're a little more susceptible to missiles than typical. Say like a Praetorian Guard, for instance, they will not be very susceptible to missiles, whereas these guys kind of will be. So again, dominate anything head-on, but expensive and, again, not vulnerable to missiles, but missiles are a bigger threat than typical with your elite units. All right, so skirmishers. The, the Egyptians have these kind of native skirmishers here, which are pretty cool. Um, they're not real strong, but they're neat-looking units. They have these Egyptian slingers, Egyptian archers, Nubian bowmen, and Egyptian javelinmen. So Egyptian slingers are pretty cheap. Uh, they don't have a very good attack, but they're cheap. Egyptian archers, same thing. Not a very good attack, not very good range, but they're cheap. Nubian bowmen, not sure why you'd pick these guys. They really just have higher health, morale melee attack yeah not a whole lot of use in buying these guys over these guys trying to see what the difference is it's really just the health and melee attack and stuff not worth it I wouldn't pay for it um, let's see Egyptian javelin men you've got uh, 35 missile attack which isn't bad let's check out their uh, piercing damage 10 pretty good so for a low-cost javelin unit these guys are not gonna be bad they really don't have any armor so beware of that, they can die to enemy missile fire, but just as far as being able to stay behind your line and maybe deal with elephants, that would be a good unit. Peltus, these guys are going to have a little more armor and shield. Light Peltus are going to have the extended ammunition. They still have 10 ammunition, they used to have 12, but still 10 ammunition is quite a bit for a uh, javelinman. Mercenary Cretan archers we've seen before, very high attack. They have a uh, heavy shot, which is great for piercing enemy armor. Um, a very strong unit, albeit very expensive. These guys can beat down almost any other or, uh, missile unit in the game. Uh, it'd be close between them and Boeric Slingers or Rhodian Slingers. But uh, when it comes to cheaper Slingers, Cretan Archers can beat them head-to-head. -head. It's just that you got to remember these guys have less um, ammo than Slingers. So shooting Slingers head-to-head -head with Cretan Archers really isn't the best use for them because you really want to be using that ammo on more high-value targets. Uh, Rhodian Slingers are, of course, some of the best Slingers in the game. A very dangerous unit, albeit very expensive. Uh, Ptolemaic Cav is probably the best non-cataphract shot Cav in Rome 2. They're very powerful melee attack, very good charge bonus. They do have low melee defense, but they have solid armor, health, and base morale. These guys with a trample charge engaged are going to be very powerful. They are expensive, is the trade-off, so you're going to pay for that. 
And then, like I said, in melee cav, Egypt is a little bit weak. They have camel spearmen, Egyptian cav, light cav, and citizen cav. Uh, camel spearmen are great for adding that scare factor into a fight, and they're also good for running down uh, enemy skirmishers. You're going to have Egyptian cavalry, which has pretty good attack for a light cav unit. It's not great. Um, it's a little less than the Celtic light horse, but, you know, for a light cav unit, it's a pretty handy unit. Uh, again, it could deliver somewhat of a rear charge um, to, to help out in a, in a fight. It's not going to be as good as shock cav. This light cav here, let's see, it ups the attack, melee defense, and health. Yeah, attack, melee defense, and health. So we pay a little more, get a little more of those things, and then citizen calves can actually be just uh, one one number lower on attack, but it's going to really ramp up armor, and it gives you a little more base morale. And it does have less melee defense, too, interestingly enough. All right, so skirmishers, uh, or missile skirmishers, they have skirmisher cav, camel archers, and tarantine cav. We've seen skirmisher cav before, nothing new here. Camel archers are just uh, kind of like a horse archer, a little more expensive, but they also have the scare horses function. They do have whistling shot, heavy shot, and flaming shot, as well as precision shot. So these guys do have a lot of functionality to them uh, as a skirmish unit. Can be used to scare elephants. Heavy shot can be used on enemy infantry. They can scare horses. Uh, they can shoot flaming shot into the back of your enemy cav fight. I mean, there's lots of things they can do. Tarantine cav, I've discussed before. They do have a shield, which helps them resist a little bit of missile fire, but I don't find this unit to generally be cost effective. Its melee attack and weapon damage is pretty low. I wish it was a little higher, and it might help justify them as being better for running down enemy skirmishers. I'm not going to say they're incapable of doing so, but they are fairly fragile. They have scythe chariots, which is much like Pontus. Again, haven't tested them after the update. And then they have two elephant offerings. One is an African elephant, and the other is an African war elephant. Um, so... And I wonder if they've changed the caps. No, you can still bring four elephants. Uh, elephants are very expensive now, even more expensive than they were. This used to be the cost of the armored ones, um, so you can tell that they've increased the price. African elephants don't have javelins or anything to throw from the top and are a little weaker as far as their stats. And then African war elephants will have men with javelins on top, and they have access to flaming javelins, which adds the elephant scare effect along with a flaming missile effect. So if you're going to use your elephants against infantry or cavalry, I suggest you put them into flaming missile because it'll add that extra morale penalty whenever you get in the fight with them. As far as artillery goes, nothing special there, just the standard stuff. Let's go take a look at a replay that I have. Um, I just used these guys not too long ago. So this battle of Migdol was between me and Pontus, funny enough, because they were in my last uh, faction focus. I decided uh, the rule that my opponent asked for was no chariots or elephants, and I said okay to that. Uh, even though Egypt and Pontus both have chariots, and then of course Egypt has elephants as well. But Pontus is a pike faction, and chariots and elephants aren't always the best choice against other pike factions. What I did <coughs> in this battle was I brought a, a line of cheap Egyptian pikes. I brought four of them. Yeah. Four of them. And then I have four mercenary Cretan archers. These guys are going to be very powerful against enemy... Uh, <clears throat> Basically, I, I figured my opponent would have to bring swordsmen, which Egypt has better swordsmen, or he'd have to bring pikemen, which Egypt, again, has just as good a pikemen. And I figured that against either, my Cretan archers would be fairly useful. I have my general here in a carrion axeman. I had a little bit of extra money, so I bought this Egyptian infantry. Again, can be used for cannon fodder, charge bait, whatever you want. And I've got two Galatian swordsmen on each flank. And then I have uh, three Ptolemaic cav and two, I guess... Um, camel spearmen and I have one skirmisher cab over here so basically my idea is of course I want to close the distance with my opponent I've been getting a look at his army he's got I, I know he has at least three Pontic royal cab and then he's got a, a citizen cab here and he may have more cab that's coming out of these bushes here he's got about five eastern javelin men so he's come javelin heavy and these guys are powerful and then against a lot of Egyptian infantry they would be handy so I can understand why my opponent's chosen them and he's backing them up with bronze shield pikemen these guys are pretty cool units. They actually look quite a bit like a hoplite with the big uh, Sarissa. Very powerful pike units. They'll cut down any of my infantry if they can get the opportunity to do it. Of course, I don't plan on making that easy for him. So again, here he's got a citizen cav and a noble blood cav charging forward. And all I have here is two camel spearmen and a Ptolemaic cav. I go ahead and uh, send my spearmen in first to absorb the charge. And then uh, I was going to... I tried to pull my Ptolemaic cab back, but see, he clicked an attack order on my Ptolemaic cab here, not on my Camel Spearmen. So my Camel Spearmen are going to actually start killing them at an alarming rate, whereas my Camel Spearmen are going to get trounced over here by this Noble Blood cab, understandably. My opponent pushes forward with his Javelins, 
I go ahead and fire a few shots with my archers, but I'm going to retreat. I don't want his javelinmen killing my archers. And I send some of my infantry forward to try and see if I can push back his javelinmen. He gets a cab charge on me over here when I wasn't paying attention, which was fantastic. Just wrecked my Ptolemaic cab here. And then here I'm going to just get a last second counter charge with this Ptolemaic cab. And over here he decides to charge towards my infantry. So I turn to brace. Um, still not going to be a great fight for my infantry because they're light uh, non-formation attack infantry. But it gives me a chance to start firing my Cretan archers at his general. Uh, but this does give his uh, javelins time to start unloading on some of my uh, swords here. and he's, he's done a considerable amount of damage to them. And here, again, cheap Egyptian infantry. This is the kind of thing they're good for. They're light. They're fast. They can get in here and just cause some disruption. All the while, you know, I'm getting more shots on his Pontic Royal Cav. And I am in heavy shot now, so you can see that I got a considerable number of kills. Over here, he lost one Cav unit, and I now have a Ptolemaic Cav and a Camel Spearman free. I decided to just leave my swords to duke it out with his Noble Blood Cav and his Pikes. Not the best kind of fight to leave them in, but there's no reason in committing my cab over here and getting it killed because I'm already losing the cab fight on my left flank, so not something that I really care to do. My little diversion here, waste more of his ammo, gets his cavalry away from my lines. He's actually killing some of his own Pontic Royal Cav there with his javelins. So between my archers and his own javelins, his general is quite uh, damaged. And again, now my archers are in a position to start firing at his javelinmen. And I don't really just want to let his javelinmen unload on my... Uh, on my uh, pikemen. So I take them out of uh, phalanx formation and do a very strange charge. And really this is again just to push his um, skirmishers back while my Cretan archers start to mow him down. Look how fast my Cretan archers mowed down these units. So basically just to chase him off. This is going to get some of my pikemen killed, but my pikemen aren't all that important. I've got my Cretan archers and they're perfectly capable of destroying his bronze shield pikemen. All I need to do is just get rid of his skirmishers and his cav and my Cretan archers can finish this fight. I am going to pull my pikes back, though. I mean, there's no sense in me going head-to-head. -head. My, my purpose was to push his javelins back. I did it, so I'm going to pull my infantry back. Right here, I did actually defeat his noble blood cav. And he's still got a pikeman over here that I'm trying to get behind. But, I mean, these bronze shields are tough. Even behind him, it's going to take a while for the fight to grind out. He keeps turning to face one direction or the other, so I keep charging from opposite directions, trying to cause some damage. So I'm going to keep trying to micro that. Over here, his uh, general unit routes. And I'm chasing his cab down with some Galatian swordsmen. Again, just trying to pin them down. Uh, it's just a holding maneuver so that I can get my archers over here to fire into the cab blob with their, uh, their heavy shot, because heavy shot can be very useful. And again, just trying to keep his, um, trying to keep his uh, javelins at bay. Over here at this point, I've got my Kyrian axemen and all four of my archers. I'm not going to be getting great shots because my archers are blobbed, but it's enough to make his cavalry want to run away, and they'll take losses as they run away as well. I've got my Camel Spearmen back from the other flank, and my Pontic Royal Cav are exhausted, but trying to make their way back to the other flank. And again, just keeping my infantry in a position where his infantry can't engage me. I was going to try and use my Camel Spearmen to keep pinning these guys down, but once I see that that's not a good idea, I all of a sudden realize the gap right here. And I'm going to go beeline it for his Eastern Javelinmen, which may be low on ammo, but it's best to kill them and make sure that they don't have ammo to use on me. And now my Pontic Royal Cav is on station and can face down this enemy Pontic Cav. So here comes my Camel Spearman. His Javelins are still on skirmish mode. He would have actually been better to just try and stand his ground. Uh, his guys have Javelin or Daggers out, so they might have been out of ammo. These guys still have uh, Javelins out, so they, they might. Unless he put them into melee mode, I don't know. But yeah, watch my uh, archers here. <laughs> just cut down 30 of those pikemen on a, on a heavy volley. Again, I've got heavy shot activated here. I'm just going to screen my archers with my Egyptian pikemen, which I've forgotten to put back in phalanx at this point. But phalanx units just aren't very good at attacking, so my opponent's going to have a hard time pushing me anywhere. All the while, I can continue this fight. Look at my Carrion Axeman getting thrown into the fight here to take out his mercenary Celtic Light Horse, along with my own Ptolemaic Cav. And then I've got Egyptian pikemen over here trying to keep his Pontic Royal Cav at bay. And again, my archers just absolutely shredded this bronze shield pikeman, completely routed it. And now I can pick a new unit. So at this point, I was able to get my opponent into the position that I wanted. My pikemen don't have to get a bunch of kills. Uh, my skirmishers and my cav were hopefully what was going to get my kills. And look at this camel spearman earning its pay here, chasing down javelinmen. These guys had ammo, though. And you can see that when they do get a chance to stop and throw it, they will kill my camel spearman. But those guys got a lot of kills, 160 or so kills. And here I just have to keep out flanking his pikemen. See, you can't really attack with pikemen. And these uh, cheap swordsmen are great for this. 
My archers right now are positioned to fire into this bronze shield, so they're going to be ripping this bronze shield apart with flank fire. And then I've got infantry units positioned all around it so that my opponent won't really know which way to face. <laughs> look at these Egyptian pikemen out of formation. We'll talk about a weak unit. But yeah, look at this bronze shield just crumbling under the Cretan, arch and fu Cretan archer fire. And again, out here, I'm going to be supporting this cav fight with the spear unit. And around here, I'm just trying to keep my opponent outmaneuvered. He is going to pin in these uh, Galatian swords, and I probably should have run away. Like, I could have just retreated this direction, but I didn't. But yeah, you can see that I've got his bronze shield surrounded. But Pike's, again, just not very offensive. And check out his javelins throwing at my Egyptian pikemen in the back. They don't even need to hit these guys in the back to be effective. I did realize that my um, skirmisher cav had evaded his light cav earlier and is now free to come back and attack these uh, eastern javelinmen. My guys are actually going to throw some javelins while they're trying to get around this pikeman. They got hung on the order uh, on the corner of this uh, bronze shield, so it's going to take my minute, a minute to get loose. But you can see my uh, my Cretan archers and my uh, javelin horsemen are just ripping these guys up, and now his uh, eastern javelinmen are going to rout his bronze shields routed, and uh, that was the end of that fight. So it was a fun fight, uh, Pontus Egypt there. You can see that in the end, my Cretan archers definitely did pull their weight. They killed Bronze Shields pikemen, which are more expensive than they are. So each one of them killed a pretty good number of them and some Eastern Javelin men. Uh, it wasn't all Bronze Shield kills. If you look at my Camel Spearmen, mopped up uh, you know a couple of units worth of Eastern Javelin men too. That paid for itself. Uh, none of the rest of my units got a ton of kills except for that one Galatian Swordman did mop up 137 kills. Not sure what he killed. Uh, even my Egyptian infantry got 32 kills, which is pretty impressive considering how sucktacular they are. Uh, not really a whole lot of other units that did fantastic. I mean, my Ptolemaic Cav, most of their kills were against uh, enemy Cav, which means that that wasn't too bad, but they are very expensive. But really, again, my archers just win in the day there, and uh, sometimes that's the way your army's intended to be. But look at these Javelin kills. My opponent got a lot of Javelin kills. In fact, he killed more men than I did. I just had a bigger army than he did, so his javelins do get a lot of kills. Something you have to be aware of, javelins are not gone since they've been nerfed, but uh, they do have more limited ammunition. So you, you can see he got to a point in the battle where he didn't have enough ammunition to keep taking my men out. So javelins really ought to be focused on elite units, and then you need to have a plan to deal with some of the cheaper units. Um, but they, they definitely can destroy pike lines and uh, even sometimes uh, very elite infantry. His Pontic Royal Cav was tough. You can see these guys did get quite a few kills. And this Noble Blood Cav got a lot of kills too. Anyway, uh, Air of Carthage... Oh, well, never mind. i got to give you a quick rundown. So Egypt is a power faction in my mind. They're good against just about anybody. It doesn't mean they're better than everybody. It just means they're good in almost every situation. They can have something to offer because of their versatility. Uh, they were definitely what I would consider one of the three or four power factions, and that would be Egypt, Rome. Um, Egypt, Rome, Bactria and Seleucids. Those would be the power factions I would throw out. Um, anyway, hope you all enjoyed this. Air of Carthage, signing off for now.